Hi, I'm Jeffrey, and welcome back to Night Falls. Join me around the campfire at the foot of these mystical falls for a podcast of bedtime stories designed to help you sleep. Each week, we'll begin with a brief meditation before settling into our story for the evening. And don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. I want you to drift off whenever you're ready. Pull up a seat beside the campfire tonight and let me tell you the tale of Fenris, a young boy hailing from the kingdom of the Water Dragon. Fenris learned young that our greatest adventures are almost always born out of companionship. My dog Otto has a habit of bringing me along on his adventures. Morning walks often turn into muddy trudges through the thicket as he chases after squirrels and I chase after him. Otto is something of a lovable rogue. On the days when I feel pressed for time, he has a habit of bounding away from me at speed and adding miles to the length of our walk. Though I'd never tell him, I've often found the extra time to relax to have been exactly what I needed. Like all great friends, Otto knows exactly what I need, even when I myself haven't the foggiest. So, before tonight's journey begins, let's take a moment to create a little time and space for ourselves. Coming to a comfortable position, allow the muscles of your jaw to release, your head and neck to come into alignment and your shoulders to drop down into the soft cushions beneath you. Release the muscles of your core and drop in a deep breath as you welcome kindness, compassion and calmness into your body. Exhaling, release any frustration or impatience lingering within you. This is your time your opportunity to honour yourself. Inhaling, allow your breath to deepen and feel your lungs expanding as you create a sense of space within you. Exhaling, let go of all of the faces and places that led you up to this evening. Inhaling, know that there is only you breathing into this perfect moment you have carved out for yourself. And exhaling, if you're feeling ready, Fenris's story can begin. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lied the kingdom of the Water Dragon. This kingdom was a most spectacular place, full of radiating beauty and mystical magic. Every building looked like a castle, with majestic staircases that wound their way up and down the mountain, from each beautiful building to the next. Towers and turrets with stunning multicoloured mosaic roofs popped out above the stone walls, and regal golden statues representing mythical winged creatures stood guard, dotted around the kingdom. Everyone who lived in the kingdom of the Water Dragon counted their lucky stars every day that they were blessed enough to live there. The kingdom cascaded down the side of a great mountain and a long river wound its way up and down and around the rocky face. The river flowed perfectly in between buildings and culminated in a sparkling turquoise blue pool in the centre of the kingdom. Here, in the centre of the kingdom, lay the golden tree of prosperity. 
The golden tree of prosperity had bloomed for thousands of years. It shone with the glittering light of millions of crescent-shaped golden leaves. Legend said that each leaf shone with a light captured from individual moments of grace and goodwill that the people of the kingdom had committed. As long as the golden tree of prosperity continued to shine, the kingdom of the water dragon would continue to live in abundance. Guarding the golden tree was the famous water dragon that lived in their waters, called Anan. Anan was a peaceful dragon, and he took his duty very seriously. He was popular with the people of the kingdom, who loved to watch him glide through the rivers. They took comfort whenever they saw Anan bathing in the pool surrounding the golden tree. Every day, Anan would coil his long serpent-like body around the base of the podium that held up the tree of prosperity and lie down peacefully. It appeared that Anan had a relaxing existence spent bathing in the waters, darting along the streams, and every now and then raising his giant head out of the water to gaze closer at the tree and at the people observing nearby. Anan could not talk to the people of the kingdom, but he could often be heard humming a soothing song with his whale-like voice. In in the water dragon brought a feeling of safety to the kingdom, and all who lived there were very grateful for his presence. Living in the kingdom was a young boy named Fenris. Fenris was the youngest son of a stonemason, and his family expected that he would grow up and follow in his father's footsteps. After all, that is what all of his older brothers had done. But Fenris was still too small to carry out any heavy labour around his father's workshop. So most of the time, he was sent out on errands while his brothers assisted his father in the shop. One early morning, Fenris was on his way to the blacksmith's to have a tool fixed for his father. He bobbed along happily, his mop of sandy blonde hair flopping across his face as he went. He passed by the golden tree of prosperity on his route, as normal, and peered over the railings at the water's edge, trying to catch sight of Anan the water dragon. Fenris had always been fascinated by Anan since he was a baby, and his day was always instantly made better when he caught sight of the incredible mythical creature. But today, he couldn't see Anan swimming around the water. Perhaps he is swimming around the rivers right now, Fenris thought, shrugging off the absence of the water dragon and continuing on his way. The next day, Fenris passed the same spot and looked around for Enan. However, he wasn't there again. Fenris furrowed his brow and squinted his eyes. Maybe he wasn't looking hard enough. He scanned the blue waters surrounding the golden tree, but he could not spot him. Fenris wandered around the kingdom, staring into every stream and every waterfall, attempting to catch a glimpse of Enan the water dragon. But alas, he did not see him all day. On the third day, it seemed that Fenris wasn't the only person to notice that Enan had pulled a disappearing act Nobody has seen Anan around the kingdom in days, his friend, Gideon, proclaimed. 
Everyone is concerned about what will happen to the golden tree of prosperity with him gone. Who's going to protect it? The spirit of the tree always seems to be fading. The leaves aren't glowing as brightly as they were a couple of days ago. Fenris listened to his friend Fred, but he couldn't think about what was going to happen to the golden tree right now. What had happened to Wayne and the water dragon? Nobody seemed to be concerned about his whereabouts, more about the tree of prosperity. All day, everybody in the kingdom was talking about the golden tree and Danan's disappearance. But nobody seemed to be too interested in Anan's well-being. They worried about the effects that the tree being exposed might have on their kingdom. Fenris sat by the side of the deep blue pool where Anan normally rested and pondered. Where could Anan have gone? And how could he have gotten away unnoticed? Water dragons couldn't fly as some other dragons could, and they very rarely moved on land. They were built for and thrived in water. Fenris looked around at the rivers of the kingdom, flowing down the mountainside to meet in the central pool. He must have swum away using one of these rivers, Fenris concluded. He hopped to his feet and decided to trace the path of the rivers and see where they went. He followed one river all the way up the mountainside, climbing against the current. It felt very strange to be travelling in the opposite direction to the flowing water, but Fenris knew that he wouldn't find any answers in the pool at the bottom of the kingdom. Eventually, Fenris found himself close to the very top of the mountain and noticed that the river was leading inside a cave. Quietly, Fenris waded through the shallow water and into the cave. Immediately, he could see an open clearing ahead within the rock and he pushed on as the water became deeper. He pulled himself up onto a large boulder so that he could get a better look. The inside of the cave was spectacular. A large hole in the rock to one side allowed a steep waterfall to plunge down into the cave's waters. But miraculously, As soon as the water hit the pool, the water became calm and still. The only sounds Fenris could hear were the gushing of the waterfall and the fluttering of wings and chirping of birds outside of the cave. His footsteps echoed as he hopped from stone to stone across to the highest boulder in the cave He looked around at the still water for the sight of Anan. If Anan had been searching for somewhere to escape to, for some peace and quiet, then this was definitely the perfect place. Fenris cupped his hands around his mouth and called out into the void, Anan, Anan, are you in there? There was silence for a few moments. But then Fenris noticed bubbles begin to rise in the far corner of the cave. Gracefully, the regal head of a great dragon submerged from beneath the water and glided through the water towards Fenris. It was Anan. Anan stopped in front of Fenris his big, dark eyes gazing at him with a hint of confusion but familiarity. 
Fenris laughed and smiled at the great water dragon. He was so glad he had found him. Aenon, he began to speak to the dragon. What are you doing here? Why aren't you guarding the golden tree of prosperity like you normally do? Aenon lowered his eyes to the ground despondently and sighed. Do you not want to guard the golden tree anymore? Fenris inquired, trying to read the expression on the downhearted dragon's face. Aenon dipped his head in response, closing his eyes. Fenris could tell that Aenon was not himself. He seemed out of sorts. Are you all right? Fenris asked, reaching his hand out towards the gracious water dragon. Aenon brought his head closer and rested it against Fenris's palm. Fenris knew that he had to help poor Aenon feel right again. But how could he help him when he didn't know exactly what was the matter? At that moment, Aenon let out a soft, low sigh, and Fenris had an idea. He had heard before of a place called the Healing Spring. It was a spring hidden deep in a forest far, far away that was protected by enchantments. If you made it to the healing spring, then it would magically solve all of your problems and heal your body, soul, and mind. Fenris would have to take Aenon to the healing spring. Fenris racked his brain and recalled that the first step in the journey was to get to the Forest of Wonder. It was said that in the Forest of Wonder there were many mythical creatures to be found that Fenris had never seen before, such as mermaids, unicorns and centaurs. It would be a very long journey and Fenris had no idea how the two of them could make it there together. Aenon would have to travel by sea, and Fenris on the ground. Fenris would never be able to keep up with Aenon shooting through the waters. Birds fluttered above the waterfall leading to the outside world, and Fenris suddenly had an idea. On the top of the mountain was the Fountain of Reincarnation, where a great phoenix lived. Perhaps the wise bird would be able to offer him some guidance. Come with me, Fenris commanded, ushering Aenon towards the entrance of the cave. Aenon followed dutifully behind The Fountain of Reincarnation stood proudly at the very top of the mountain. Fenris closed his eyes and enjoyed taking a deep inhale of the soothing clean air as he stood on the mountain top. The Fountain of Reincarnation was a beautiful stone fountain with a large pool of water at the base and two smaller tiers on top with water gently trickling down. The fountain didn't look much different to any other common water display. However, this particular water source was famously renowned for being the resting place of a great phoenix. The phoenix was said to be as old as the universe, coming to existence at the time when the world began the phoenix had the power to live forever and every one hundred years would shed its feathers and burst into flames, ready to reincarnate within the fountain of reincarnation. 
the people of his kingdom would come together to watch the magical rebirth if they were lucky enough to be alive at the turn of the century. Fenris had never seen the phoenix for himself, but he had heard many stories about its greatness. He looked around the mountain top, but could see nothing except for the fountain. Hello, he called out. My name is Fenris, and I am from the kingdom of the water dragon. This here is Aenon, and he needs your help. We need your help, mighty Phoenix. The wind instantly picked up, and swirling leaves began to spiral and twist around and above the fountain of reincarnation. In a burst of multicolored feathers, the great Phoenix appeared, perching on top of the fountain. Fenris gasped in delight, the breathtaking bird. It was at least three times the size of Fenris, and even more dazzling than it had looked in picture books. Its colourful feathers of pink and orange and yellow were so scintillating that they created the illusion that they were permanently on fire. The great phoenix greeted Fenris and asked him how he could be of service. Fenris explained his plan to take Anan to find the healing spring in the hopes that he would feel better once more and be able to return to their kingdom to continue protecting the golden tree of prosperity. The forest of wonder is a long way away, the wise phoenix replied, raising his eyebrows. It is a difficult journey that could take you many months and many hardships to make it there. While this wasn't what Fenris wanted to hear, he knew that there was no other way he could help Enon. Do you know the way we can get there? I have to help Enon feel happy again, Fenris implored persistently. As a matter of fact, I do, the wise bird replied. The huge phoenix spread its wings and floated towards the edge of the mountain top. Fenris joined at his side and gazed out across the vast landscape beyond. You will need to fly to the forest of wonder, the great phoenix revealed, turning his feathered head and gesturing towards the waterfall that led to the sea. You will ride on my back, and Aenon will swim. Together, we will all journey across the sea to the Forest of Wonder, where I will leave you to go from there. Fenris couldn't believe what he was hearing. The phoenix was not only offering to help him, but he was offering to allow him to ride on his back the whole journey there. Without a moment to lose, Aenon dived down into the waterfall and gracefully glided down and into the deep blue sea below. He immediately started swimming through the waters in the direction of the horizon. Fenris climbed up onto the sturdy, strong back of the phoenix clutching a bunch of feathers in each hand, and they took flight. Together, they raced across the wide open sea. Fenris rode on the phoenix's back through the sky, with Aenon slinking through the waters below. They flew 
and swam at great speeds, and Fenris laughed with delight as the cool wind caressed his face and rustled his hair. His clothes billowed in the breeze as he held on tightly to the multicolored feathers from the giant bird's bag. Fenris had never felt so alive and free. If only he could fly like a bird too, or swim through the waters as easily as a water dragon. Life would be such an adventure. Yet here he was, experiencing it with both of them. In next to no time, they had arrived at the edge of the Forest of Wonder. Fenris and Enon were very far from home, but their journey had only just begun. Fenris thanked the great phoenix for his assistance, and Enon bowed his head respectively. Then they found a stream flowing into the forest and made their way inside, with Fenris walking on the banks of the water, while Enon floated alongside. Even though the pair of unlikely friends couldn't speak with one another, they seemed to have an understanding. They trusted each other and enjoyed the quiet company. They walked for many miles through the forest, admiring the towering trees and the unusual colourful flowers. They felt as though everything in this forest was something that Fenris had never seen before. It was truly a forest full of wonder. Fenris wondered if Enon had ever been here before or seen such exquisite wildlife or perhaps he had lived in the kingdom his whole life, just like Fenris had. After several hours of walking, Fenris was beginning to grow tired. He yawned and stretched and looked over at Anan. Anan looked equally as weary. Fenris rubbed his tired eyes and glanced ahead. There was something shimmering through the gaps in the trees in the distance. He began to run, and Anan picked up the pace too. Bursting through the trees, they stopped in their tracks as they came upon a most incredible scene. In front of them, was a giant mirror, the size of a house. However, the mirror didn't appear to reflect the scenery behind them. Instead, it showed a different place altogether. The mirror appeared to be some sort of portal between worlds or places. Fenris's eyes grew wide as he noticed water from inside the mirror flowing out like a waterfall and into a small pool of water on this side of the forest. Birds flew in and out of the mirror, flitting between realms with ease. The giant mirror frame was wooden and carved with intricate swirling patterns Tree branches, vines, and plants had grown around the frame, meandering in every direction. A mossy bank was built up to the side, growing on the giant root of a tree that had twisted its way around the mirror, holding it upright in place. Fenris squinted his eyes and looked deep into the mirror. 
If he wasn't mistaken, he believed he could see the healing spring inside the miraculous portal. He looked to Anan and cried, We found it. We found the healing spring. Let's go. Fenris had read in books that there were guards to the healing spring, but he couldn't see anyone around. Anan and Fenris waded out into the small pool of water in front of the portal and prepared to climb on through when they started to hear a beautiful song in the air. The harmonious music was gentle on their ears. Fenris felt himself being serenaded like a mother singing a lullaby and he felt light-headed as if he was drifting off into a deep sleep. There were guards to the healing spring after all. Fenris and Danan watched as two beautiful mermaids slunk up out of the water and one appeared on the mossy bank of the giant tree trunk. Who goes there? A mermaid with long white hair and large purple eyes asked in a sweet voice. Fenris introduced himself and explained how Aenon wasn't well and they required the healing spring to make him better again. The mermaid laid across the mossy bank, casually braided her long mane of black hair and informed him that he must pass a test in order to be admitted entry to the healing spring. Fenris hadn't expected a test when he set out on this noble quest, but he had no choice now. He must do this for Aenon. The third mermaid perched herself on the bottom of the portal frame and let her blue fin dangle into the water, teasingly below. She closed her eyes took a deep breath and spoke in a husky tone. What can run but never walks? Has a mouth but never talks? Has a head but never weeps? Has a bed but never sleeps? Fenris thought hard. He repeated the riddle in his head and then spoke it out loud again. This was a tricky question and he only had one chance to get it right. What can run but never walks? Has a mouth but never talks? He looked to Enan for inspiration, but Enan simply stared back at him, unable to contribute. The riddle almost sounded like a description of Enan himself. He couldn't talk, at least not to Fenris, and he could run through water, but not on land. He repeated the last part of the riddle once more. Has a head, but never weeps. Has a bed, but never sleeps. Then a light bulb clicked inside Fenris's head. This riddle was almost like a description of Anan, but perhaps... That was because Anan was so entwined with the answer to this riddle. He turned back to the mermaid triumphantly and announced his answer. The answer is a river, he declared. 
the mermaids froze for a moment. Then they smiled and slowly parted ways, leaving the entrance to the portal wide open. Fenris and Aenon dived forward towards the portal, while Fenris clambered over the rim of the frame. Aenon slinked with ease over and into the healing spring beyond. As Fenris's body splashed down into the warm waters of the healing spring, he felt an overwhelming sense of peace and tranquility. It was as if all of the aches and pains in his body, the worries and stresses in his head, and the fears and doubts in his soul melted away and into the waters of the spring. He felt light-headed and transcendent. He laid back into the water and floated there like a starfish, allowing the rejuvenating waters to hold him and take away all his troubles. He felt healed too. Fenris closed his eyes and took a deep breath in through his nose, savouring the healing power of the mystical spring. He sighed out with contentment. He heard a soft splash nearby and turned his head to the side to gaze at Aenon. He had hoped that the healing spring would solve Aenon's problems and make him feel better again. But he didn't anticipate what he saw. Aenon was not only happily swimming around the waters of the spring with the new energy about him, but he had been joined. Three other water dragons danced around him in a circle welcoming him to their fold and waving their heads towards one another in communication. Aenon looked joyful and free, and the spark of light had returned to his eyes. This was what Aenon had wanted all along. He hadn't been under the weather. He had been lonely, after years of swimming around the same waters on his own, living for other people who took him for granted, he had grown weary and lonesome. The healing spring had magically solved his problems and healed his body, soul and mind by bringing him what his heart most desired company. Fenris smiled and watched all four water dragons tip their heads back towards the sky and let out a soothing dragon song in perfect synchronized harmony. Enon the water dragon was healed at last. Far away, back in the kingdom of the water dragon, the golden tree of prosperity began to glow brighter than ever, much to the delight of the people. The golden leaves began to gleam with a renewed spirit, brought on by the grace and goodwill of a young boy who chose to look a little deeper than others did and went out of his way to make a big difference for a lonely, lost soul. <laughs>